Hey everybody and welcome to the first episode of a new series called Mike's Magical Military Adventures. I am Mike B, of course, and this is a series that may have been helpful for me to kind of make a few years ago. I did a little bit of it, a little version of it for my Patreon supporters a few years ago. But it's something that gets brought up constantly in the YouTube comments um, because my channel is military themed and military history themed. Uh, whenever I wear something like this, even though this is a reproduction, I get the whole, oh, did you ever serve, blah, 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 that kind of thing, and that kind of tone, or, hey, were you in the military, what was your MOS, all this stuff, and I generally just kind of ignore both of the comments, um, but, you know, I figured that there are people out there who aren't just, you know, trying to play the stolen valor card and being dicks about it, and they're actually curious, and the reason I just really don't talk about my stuff that much is, A, it really, it was pretty average. Being in the military is not, not everybody's an Navy SEAL. It's not all this hardcore shit that you see in movies on TV. Most of the military is mundane and very boring. And most of your time spent is boring and it sucks. And it basically, I view it as a job that I did a few years ago. And it doesn't define who I am. It defines a part of who I am, like any job would. And it was a, it was a definitely a unique job and very interesting but you know I just I'm gonna be talking a little bit more about it and kind of going through my journey and then I'll be after the you know basic parts done because I was only in for a few years uh, I'll just kind of as I remember funny stories or if you guys have any you know valid questions that don't involve oh, how many people did you kill like that stupid shit um, I'll try to answer those but for now I'm just gonna kind of go through you know enlisting the background behind that what I did my job and everything <laughs> and uh We'll kind of chunk this out. Every other video or every third video or something like that, I'm going to do one that's uh, got a rather well, more of a in-depth, personal, and sometimes embarrassing content. And that's going to be reserved for my Patreon supporters and channel members um, because they help me make other videos that I actually like doing um, when I'm not talking about this stuff. And uh, anyway, the support really helps the channel. If you haven't noticed, I've been doing some really cool content lately with um, new historical pieces and firearms. And 2021 is going to be an awesome year for going out to the range, um, doing ballistic tests, etc., etc. So anyway, if you want to see all this series, make sure you're a supporter on either platform, become a YouTube channel member, or a Patreon supporter. Now that we got that out of the way, um, yeah, so it started out, I, I'll just give you the background and all that stuff. And, and the reason I don't really talk about it on my YouTube channel, and then I'll get into it, is because um, when I was in, I received some tactical training and some firearms training and, you know, stuff like that, memorized a bunch of things. So it doesn't really bear a lot of um, uh, relevance to what I do on my channel with military history, firearms, and all that stuff. It bears some relevance in some cases, like when I have experience with certain AR-15 platforms or M16 platforms, M4, um, or weapons that I saw overseas and all that stuff. But, I mean, other than that, how does me having been in the military have, bear any relevance on military history that's not covering what part I was involved in? So that's kind of why I just don't talk about it because I don't think it's relevant and I don't, I don't really like talking about it because there's a bunch of people that, you know, either they, they have this hero worship mentality, which I don't understand. It's a really prevalent thing in the United States where it's like, oh, it's oh, so glorious thing. Or you get other vets and people that haven't been in and are, you know, projecting their insecurities, talking shit and saying, oh, you didn't do fucking all. Well, I, I had it way worse. And it's just a dick measuring contest. That's why I usually don't even talk about it in my personal life. But I'll do this. And like I said, the ones that you know, I'm going to kind of be a little bit embarrassed about and have fun telling the stories because you, you do go through some weird stuff and you, you do fuck up quite a bit. Um, but those will probably be on Patreon and channel membership. Anyway, I think I've got that basis covered. I won't do a long intro like this for all the videos. I just wanted to let you know why I don't talk about my time in and the fact that I'm going to be doing this. So we'll get started. Um, so I was in high school. It's 2008. I graduated in 2008. <clears throat> um, and it was January, so it was the middle of my senior year. And I really wanted to join the military ever since I was a kid. And, you know, I, at that point I thought it was like this, you know, like you guys probably think that are young and 17 years old like I was, that it's just this glorious thing. You want to serve your country and do all that stuff. And, and it's going to be awesome. And you're going to be this badass and um, whatever. So anyway, I, uh, I was threatening because I wanted, I wanted my parents to sign for me when my mom would not. And I don't blame her in hindsight. Um, but... Anyway, so I threatened to join the active duty Marine Corps when I was 18. Probably wouldn't have made it, to be honest with you. Um, but 
Uh, anyway, so my dad was in the National Guard. He had been since the late 90s, and he had deployed to Iraq in 2004 and 2005 with the local National Guard unit. And I said, well, if you sign for me for that at 17, I won't join the active duty Marines at 18. So I kind of put my mom in a hard spot. She was like, fine, well, at least you know, your dad's in that unit, and I know a bunch of the people there, and they're good people. And if you ever do get deployed, I trust that you'll be okay. <clears throat> so um, she ended up signing for me, and then I went down to MEPS in January of, I think it was January 24th. Or 25th, that was my actual, I went down on the 24th. You go down the day before when you go to NEPS, the military entrance processing station. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I always get that wrong. But anyway, it's the place that you go for your medical stuff. So anyway, um, I enlist. I went through the medical process and then ended up, you pick your job at that point, right? And it was funny because I remember the medical process sucks. It's If you talk to anybody that's been through it, it's, especially when you're like really young and I pretty uncomfortable with uh, nudity at that point which we'll, we'll get to in the basic training portion of this and you know you have to bend over and spread your butt cheeks I don't know what they're checking for but it's just it's just really weird and then you get your nuts played with check for hernias it's it's uncomfortable it's just like a sports physical on steroids and everybody's really mean and everything's really tight assed and people are yelling and whatever you think it's so hardcore but it's really not anyway so you go through that medical process I did that and um when you pass that, when you pass your physical part and some other things, and you had to take the ASVAB prior to that, I did that in high school a couple months prior to that, so that was already out of the way. People took it the night before at MAPS, that's why I didn't have to do that anyway. So, you go to this office where there's somebody from the branch that you're wanting to join that um, you pick your MOS, you get your ship date for basic training locked in. And at that point, it was during the end of the surge, the big one for Iraq in 2008. It started in like 2006, 2008. They wanted people, they wanted bodies, they wanted bodies, and they wanted bodies in critical MOSs, which the unit that I was going to be in locally, my dad's unit, was happened to be a critical MOS, 11 Bravo, which is infantry. So it was a line infantry company, light infantry company, which was fun. And so I ended up getting a $20,000 signing bonus for that. The funny part is when I went in to the office, um, the guy pulled up my file and all that stuff and says, okay, yeah, here's what you got, blah, blah, blah. Um, here's the big list of jobs you can choose from. Go ahead and check them out. They have a description with them and then you know, take as much time as you need. Let me know and then we'll get you locked in. And I was just like, oh, I want to do 11 Bravo. And he looked at my scores, my GT score and my SF score, which were, they weren't like, you know, off the charts, but they were high. Like there was only about that many jobs out of that many that I wasn't eligible for, which is pretty insane. And he goes, <laughs> good one. Uh, yeah, just uh, let me know when you're ready. And I'm like, no, I'm ready. I want to do 11 Bravo. He goes, you realize that you can do all the, I'm like, I understand that, but the unit I want to join is an infantry unit. He goes, all right, let's do it. So we got locked in. Um, I ended up getting a ship date for July something in 2008 because I had to graduate first and all that stuff. And so that was that. That was MAPS. So what the National Guard, the Wisconsin National Guard did at that point is after you get sworn in, because you have to swear in um, to the state and to the federal government at that point, um, you go to this thing, it's a weekend, drill weekend, right? It's a thing where it's called the Recruit Sustainment Program. I don't know if they still do it. But at that time, you actually went to your drill weekend. You had to show up at a certain point, whatever, and you got paid for it. And it was kind of like a mock basic training on the weekend, right? It was just to get you ready to go to basic training. That was it. And it was really interesting at that point because the first time I went, I won't, I won't go into like super detail because it's really not that great, but this is just what was going on in 2008. This is the first part of my enlistment. I'm not technically a soldier until you graduate AIT, but hey, our basic training, but um, so you go there and they actually had real like drill sergeants. They were National Guard drill sergeants that had been through, you know, the real drill sergeant school, the, the only drill sergeant school. They had the badge, the brown round, and they were dickheads. Like, they were actually yelling and screaming and swearing and all that stuff. And it was it was kind of a wake-up call, but it was weird because they do that and they teach you about the ranks and then how to march and formation stuff and this, that. Uh, how to identify a drill sergeant versus a regular NCO, you name it. And uh, officers, you just do all this stuff to get you prepared for basic training. You learn the, um, the uh, Soldier's Creed, the... I don't know what else, the army song or whatever shit like that, stupid stuff that you learn in basic and have to recite. And it just gets you prepared. The cool thing was it was only like a two-day thing. So you get super tired. And if you're not used to it, you know, you're young like me and you get school on Monday. You get at school on Friday and then Saturday morning you get bussed down to the place and whatever. So anyway, this thing just, it really did help in the long run, but it got annoying. You get a uniform and all that stuff and you feel like you're awesome. 
And um, the guys that were going to be in any of the infantry companies in the Wisconsin Guard were in the 32nd Division patch, 32nd Brigade Combat Team patch, the Red Arrow. And then all of the Pogues, or people who weren't going to be in the 32nd, were wearing the Bucky Badger patch. That's how you could tell. So that's all I remember about that. It was interesting. Um, did help out a lot with the um, basic training part. But anyway, so then two of my other people that I went to school with enlisted as well. We ended up getting the same ship date for um, July, and we were going to go down there together, and get, we are going to be in the same unit together and everything. So at that point, you could, it was called Stripes for Buddies, I think that still applies, where if you get somebody to enlist and they say that you recommended them, you get promoted. So I ended up getting two people, well, I actually got three people to join that were going to join anyway, but um, I got credit for it, so I was an E3, pretty much right off the bat, a couple months into it, which was nice for pay. Um, but anyway, what the hell was I going to say? I got off track. See, I, I got on these tangents. Oh, yeah. So they went down there with me, too, on these drill weekends because they joined a few weeks after I did, or within a few weeks. And so it was kind of like a fun weekend. And then you go to school on Monday. Uh, the one guy had already graduated, but the other guy was like, God, you know, that was a long weekend. Yeah, I'm tired and all that stuff. We all thought we were hardcore because, I mean, yeah, we were kids. We are literally 17, 18 years old. Anyway, that's that happened for the next six months. Uh, we'd do that once a month. And, um, yeah, that's all, that's all it really is. It's just like... You get ready, you learn a bunch of stuff, and it's a weekend thing that you get paid for, and you get to wear a uniform and be all hard or feel all hardcore and, and whatever. So it's really interesting. Anyway, so that's that's about as, as amazing as the first six months of my enlistment were. And the next video, I'll go on to talk about actually going to basic training, what that's like. Um, very interesting. But yeah, this is all this is all you got to remember as well. This is 2008, so this is almost 13 years ago. It's 12 and a half years ago already that this happened. So thing, a lot of things have changed. It's not going to be, a, you know, oh, the pussy ass army today. Like, I'm just going to say things are different. I, I don't, <clears throat> I'm not, I'm not one of these people that, again, is it's not a dick measuring contest for me. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, you know, comfortable with what I did and what I didn't do. And it's like, I just did what I did and it's not that exciting. That's the thing is a lot of you guys think that the military is a lot different than what it actually is because of the media advertisements and just our culture and Hollywood's to blame too. Um, in YouTube with the bro vet thing, another genre it just annoys me. But um, yeah, I'll just tell you. So that that was how exciting the first six months were. I graduated high school barely with the skin of my teeth, and then yeah, that summer and just waiting, playing paintball, having fun, um, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, this is this is how exciting it, it was really. Like, all right, I'll, I'll keep I'll quit, quit repeating myself. Anyway, the next video we'll talk about basic training, getting down there. Um, and yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you've got any questions or whatever, again, try to ask them. And I'll try to address them eventually. But yeah, I'll just get through the, you know, kind of the whole basic spiel of it first. And then I'll start getting into more funny stories. So I already did the Patreon channel member shtick. Hope you like this series, guys. Like I'm, uh, I'm kind of scatterbrained right now. So I'm going to end the video. But hopefully the next videos will be okay. But yeah, hopefully this answers some questions and kind of sheds some light on my experience. It'll just be that. It's not going to be... Some grandiose, bloviating, full of lies, bullshit, you know, war stories. This is going to be what happened, and that's that. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next episode of Mike's Magical Military Adventures.